Welcome to the Go for Web Development video course by Pact Publishing. In this video, we'll build a personal library web application in Go, focusing on the standard library and most popular third party packages. My name is Larry Price. I'm a software engineer with a passion for exploring the world of programming. I have a breadth of experience building software in a number of programming languages, including Go, Ruby, JavaScript, and C, to name a few of my favorites. I fell in love with Go a couple of years ago and have taken every opportunity to utilize it at home and in the workplace. I've used Go to build web applications or create utility scripts, and I often document my experiences on my blog at LarryPrice.com. This is the very first video in Go for Web Development, so I'll take this time to give a brief overview of the topics covered within this course and the structure of the course. This course is divided into six sections. Each section will build on the concepts learned and the code written in each previous section as we organically build a fully functional personal library application. In the first section, we'll build a basic web server from scratch and start learning about templates and database connections. In section two, we'll build search functionality into our basic web server. Our server will pull results from an external API called Classify, which will help us identify books. We'll start integrating Ajax calls into our front end, and we'll save selected books to our database. We'll also introduce the concept of web middleware and its many uses in building web applications. Throughout section three, we'll introduce viewing our book collection and deleting unwanted books. During this section, we'll also introduce popular third-party packages into our app, such as Gorilla Mux and the ACE template rendering engine. Section 4 will see us extending our database usage to include sorting and filtering our book collection based on user input. We'll use the popular GORT package to make database access easier. In Section 5, we'll focus on adding multi-user authentication to our app to enable any number of users to access personal library collections when viewing our site. We'll learn to use modern cryptography library bcrypt to hash user passwords and block any unknown users from entering the site. We'll wrap up the course in section 6, where we'll think about the next steps in our Go web development journey. We'll discuss popular Go web frameworks and we'll delve into several tools which will allow us to easily format, lint, and test our code. In the very end, we'll update our web application to deploy it to Heroku for the world to see. Before starting the course, you'll need Go up and running. Go and all of its dependencies can be installed on any of the most popular operating systems and architectures but I'll be using Go 1.5 on Ubuntu Linux throughout the series. You'll probably want to have a base knowledge of Go syntax, which you can easily get by walking through the Go tour on golang.org. Having some experience in building software for the web will be helpful, but is not necessary to fully participate in this course. We'll start this course with a blank slate, but we'll end with a fully functional library app that will be able to deploy to the cloud. Now that you know what to expect from this course, I hope you'll take my hand and walk with me as we explore the world of Go web development together.